Finally, last but not least, what to do about it. Throughout these lectures, we talked a lot about technology, what it is and how it evolves. And then we looked into how society co-evolves with technology. In particular, we took a deep, deep dive in previous lectures about digitalization and algorithmification and how this current technological paradigm, the dominating paradigm, is changing society, how it is innovating. Now, what we are still missing is this third part of it, and that is how we can socially construct our socio-technological reality. And you do that basically in two ways, with policies and strategies. Policies, we usually use that name if the public sector does the guidance, and strategies when the private sector does it. That's not exclusive, but you can think about these. These are two different levels of intervention in, into the game, making the game whatever we want it to be, safer, more productive, more developed, more human, or whatever we want. And you can look at it like that. So strategies are usually pursued by the private sector. So if you think about a game, let's take the world's most popular sports game, soccer. So strategies would be what is done by the players. So these are the players. And some players have literally reinvented the game. Pelé, Beckenbauer, Messi, Ronaldo, and they have different strategies that advance the game. And these are the heroes of the game. No doubt about it. Same as in the real world, the private sector, entities, the companies that innovate are, are the ones, are the heroes of the game. Policies are more the ones that coordinate the game. And they think about how to make the game, in that case, in soccer, more entertaining for the crowd. In, in development case, how to make the game safer, more productive, better well-being for everybody. So that's more like you know, like FIFA or the soccer association that organizes the games and organizes the rules. And they could say, for example, let's say uh, every third corner gives you a penalty shot. Now suddenly the ones that are really good in corners will be less valuable and the ones that are really good in penalties will be more valuable. And that changes the game, might make it more, yeah, more what? And we have to talk about it. What do we, what do we strive for? The game to be entertaining? for it to be everybody better off, for it to develop faster? What do we try to optimize here for? And that is the idea of the social construction. So as we start, when we started this entire specialization in our first lecture, we talked a lot about that, that technology is not automatically good, the digital technology doesn't automatically lead to a better world, it, nor is it automatically bad. In the first visions about the digital age, they were quite scary. I mean, George Orwell talked about the big brother, but technology is neither good nor bad. Technology is a tool, just like <laughs> I redundantly use the hammer here just to hammer that point home. It's like the hammer, right? If you need to build yourself a shelter to protect yourself from the elements, or if you want to compete with stronger animals, a hammer is extremely useful back in the Stone Age. But once you have a hammer, you also become pretty dangerous. And it depends on how you use the hammer and if you are useful to your fellow humans or not, if you're beneficial to something beneficial or if you're dangerous to others. So but the hammer is a pretty low bar. The hammer is like, that's also why I use it to hammer that point home of, 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 of the rejection of technological determinism. In reality, technology is also not neutral. Guns are a technology that are made to shoot life. And bombs are a technology that are made to blow things up. So technology is neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral? So we also have to look in detail about what, what that technology is, because at the end, we shape our tools and our tools eventually 
shape us. And that is not more or less important than in previous technological revolutions, but this technological revolution we talked about goes extremely fast. It goes faster than the previous ones because things become faster and faster. And we have talked at length about that. So in our attempt to align artificial intelligence with our values, we better look into that in more detail. And that's what we will do in this final part of this entire specialization. So without further ado, let's look into that.